Hello students, my name is Niyati Seed and thanks for watching Edipedia Word videos. My topic for the presentation is the fourth section of the chapter Movement and Locomotion. In this section of presentation, we will be studying about the structure of contractile proteins present in the muscles of the human body. I have already taught you that there are two contractile proteins that are present in muscles and which are those first is actin and second is myosin okay so first we'll be studying about the first protein that is actin actin is a thin filament okay and myosin is a thick filament so the acting filament is a thin filament and it is made up of two filamentous actin helically wound to each other okay each f actin is a polymer of monomeric g actin that is globular actin okay two filaments of another protein that is tropomyosin uh, okay tropomyosin that run close to f actin throughout its length okay as you can see this is the f actin and it is uh, these uh, tropomyosin is uh, helically bounded with the uh, f actin okay and it runs throughout its length a complex protein that is troponin this is troponin okay it is distributed at regular intervals see uh, it is present here and after some time it is present here then it is present here okay so um, troponin is distributed at regular intervals on the tropomyosin in the resting stage a subunit of troponin it masks the active binding site for myosin on the active filament okay I'm again repeating that in the resting stage a subunit of troponin okay these are the subunits okay these are the subunits of troponin uh, that mask the active binding site for the myosin on the active filament that means myosin comes and attaches here on the actin this is actin and myosin comes and attaches something here but in the resting stage this troponin subunits they mask actively on actin okay so I hope it's clear to you that actin is made up of two filamentous F actins. These are F actins. Okay. They form double helix model. See, this is uh, first F uh, that is filamentous actin and this is second filamentous actin. Two uh, DNA strands like this green one. Okay. So these are two filamentous actins that form a double helix and F actin is a polymer of a monomeric globular actin and actin filament it contains two other proteins namely tropomyosin and troponin okay this is troponin and this is tropomyosin that runs throughout its length now see two filamentous of tropomyosin they run along the grooves of the f actin double helix see troponin they are made up of three subunits one two and three so it is located at the regular intervals on the tropomyosin this is tropomyosin right so uh, please note that this troponin is present in uh, tropomyosin and not in the f segment that is f actin that is this green band okay and in the resting stage, a subunit of troponin, it masks the binding site for myosin on the actin filament. Now, what are the basic functions of uh, uh, actin protein? That is contractile protein of muscles. So, the first function involves giving mechanical support to cells. That means it provides support to other cells and second it enables easy movement of cellular fluid and hence it enhances the cell mobility also. It helps in the participation in signal transmission also and it works upon the cytoplasm and it hardens it okay. So these are the four basic functions of actin protein okay. Now comes myosin. 
Now each myosin, myosin we call it as thick filament, right? So uh, each myosin filament is also a polymerized protein. That means many monomeric proteins they combine together to form a polymeric protein. So you can say that myosin is a polymeric protein because it is made up of a monomeric proteins unit that we call it as meromyosins okay and each meromyosin has two parts which are those first is globular uh, head which we call it as HMM HMM full form is heavy meromyosin with a short arm okay and uh, a tail uh, which we call it as light meromyosin or LLM okay so the head is known as HMM and tail is known as LMM okay so each my meromyosin has two important parts a globular heart head with a short arm and a tail uh, and the former being called as HMM and the latter is known as LMM that is light meromyosin okay now um, the HMM component is the head and the short arm that project outwards at regular distance and angle from each other from the surface of polymerized myosin filament and this is known as cross arm see this is the myosin head okay and this is the tail part and this is the head part so head part is known as HMM and this tail part is known as LMM that is light meromyosin okay and the myosin tails they are arranged to a point towards the center of the sarcomere and the head point to the site of the myofilament band that means it is protruding type okay so this is head and uh, where uh, actin uh, binds okay that goes and at this myosin head it goes and attaches to the uh, you can say the banding site okay and these are the ATP banding binding sites okay and um, the globular head this is globular head okay so this globular he head is an active ATPase okay enzyme and it has binding sites for ATP also and the active sites for uh, actin that means this globular head it goes and uh, binds with the actin protein okay so the what is HMM uh, component head plus short arm this is head and this is the short arm okay uh, this projects towards outwards see this is the short arm and this is the head so this is HMM uh, component and it projects outward at regular distance as you can see they they are many uh, that are projecting outwards they and they are projecting outwards at regular intervals and is called as cross arm okay and this uh, head is a globular head it is an active ATPase enzyme and it has a binding site for ATP and active sites for actin okay now according to sliding filament theory which I have already taught you in my previous presentation please refer to that uh, in sliding filament theory what happens is actin and filament they are they are uh, pulled closer together okay and the uh, so the according to the sliding filament theory of muscles contraction of muscle fiber takes place by the sliding of thin filament that is actin over the thick filament that is myosin as you can see this is the thick filament and this is the thin filament thin filament we call it as actin and thick filament we call it as myosin and these are the my myosin this is the LMM component that is light meromyosin of myosin and this is uh, uh, the HMM component uh, head and the uh, short arm this is the HMM uh, component of myosin which goes and attaches with the uh, actin protein uh, like this see it is being attached okay uh, and uh, this is a structure of actin where the troponin and tropo this uh, uh, this line pink one is your tropomyosin okay 
tropomyosin and the, these are the actin binding sites where myosin goes and attaches with the actin this is uh, troponin which is made up of uh, three subunits okay now we'll uh, move into mechanism of muscle action okay so the mechanism of muscle action is best explained by uh, sliding filament theory which states that contraction of a muscle fiber takes place by the sliding of the thin filament over thick filament right so how it takes we'll see imagine you are uh, sitting in a row boat okay sitting in a row boat this uh, diagram will give you a clear overview uh, how muscle contracts imagine you are sitting in a row boat on a still lake or ocean to move across the lake you must place your oars in the water and pull backwards at the end of your stroke you lift the oars out of the water and move them forward and dip them back into the uh, lake for the next stroke and each movement of the oar propels the boat across the water your muscles they work in a similar fashion muscles they are composed of two major protein filaments and they are your protein uh, myosin and protein actin muscle contraction occurs when these filaments they slide over this is the m myosin and this is the actin so the muscle contraction occurs when these filaments this actin and this myosin they slide over one another in a series of repetitive events now let's see how myosin molecule plays a role similar to the oars of the boat okay okay let's see how a mechanism of muscle contraction takes place see um, i have told you that mechanism of muscle contraction is best explained by the sliding filament theory which states that contraction of a muscle fiber takes place by the sliding of a thin filament over the thick filament a neural signal is sent by the cns via motor neuron okay and impulses reach the neuromuscular junction that is motor end plate and it is the junction between motor neuron and the sarcolemma of the muscle fiber what is sarcolemma sarcolemma means muscle plasma membrane okay so this is as we know this is the nerve cell and this is the muscle uh, so and it is a synapse between nerve cell and muscle and if we zoom it then we'll see that uh, these are the axons of the uh, motor junction this is the neuromuscular junction the, at where neurons and muscles uh, uh, they are in close conjugation so this is neuromuscular junction and these are the myofibrils and this is the capillary uh, through which uh, this is being supplied by blood okay and now let's see this neuromuscular junction in zoomed view these are the axons of the neuron this is the axon right this is the bulb part is the axon part of the uh, your neuron and what is this uh, you can say this is your uh, muscle membrane and uh, this is known as presynaptic terminal okay and this is the synapse okay uh, the space between axon and um, uh, another uh, muscle uh, junction you can say that this is known as your uh, synapse so this is your presynaptic terminal and this is your synaptic uh, membrane okay and this is your synaptic membrane and this is your post synaptic membrane 
okay and uh, this is your synapse Syn uh, synapse is also known as synaptic cleft but th remember that this is the sarcolemma sarcolemma means the muscle of uh, m uh, plasma membrane of a muscle okay so impulse reach the first a neural signal impulse is sent by the cns via motor neuron this is motor neuron so the these are the neurotransmitter that is uh, uh, being uh, sent by the cns that is central nervous system by a motor neuron and impulse now reach the neuromuscular jun junction that means these uh, uh, dot dot uh, as you are seeing the dot dot uh, um, bags like they are your neurotransmitter bags that they come here in the synapse okay and it is a junction where the motor neuron and sarcolemma of the muscle fiber they interact with each other okay and then what happens is uh, uh, then uh, neurotransmitter has now suppose it has now come here in the in between that is here in the junction it is released by the neuromuscular junction it generates an action potential in the sarcolemma okay this is your sarcolemma right this is your sarcolemma so uh, it generates an active uh, action potential in the sarcolemma and this action potential is spreads through the muscle fiber and it causes the release of calcium ions into the sarcoplasm that sarcoplasm means cytoplasm of muscles okay so now the action potential is being generated in the sarcolemma and it spreads through the uh, muscle fiber and it causes the release of ca2 plus ions into the sarcoplasma and see and uh, you'll see that ca2 plus uh, ions have a uh, great role to play in uh, in uh, contracting muscles okay so now what happens is this is ca2 plus okay uh, and now this and this is our actin filament so this actin filament will uh, ca2 plus will go and bind with the troponin troponin has a site see this is the depression where the ca2 plus ion goes and sit okay so ca2 plus binds with the subunit of troponin on the actin filament and it removes the masking of active sites for myosin that means uh, it uh, has removed or you can say it has removed the masking of uh, active site for myosin this is the myosin site okay but now the ca2 plus has uh, uh, gone and captured its place so using the energy from the atp hydrolysis myosin head binds to the exposed active sites on the actin to form a cross bridge and this pulls the actin filament towards the center of a band that is your act uh, an isotropic band see this is your actin filament okay and this is your myosin filament and it has uh, this is the lmm component of the myosin filament and this is the hmm component of myosin uh, filament and it has uh, atp binding site and uh, see this has uh, gone and uh, myosin head is now being attached to the actin filament see it has now been attached so and it has formed a uh, cross bridge also and uh, this is how the sliding or rotation takes place and this is how the breaking of the that means the globular head of the myosin it goes far away from the actin and it breaks the cross bridge so this is how this mechanism of uh, uh, muscle contraction takes place and this is how this process goes on and on uh, and it is under voluntary control uh, if we talk about the skeletal muscles okay so the um, what happens uh, here is uh, z line it attached to these actin is pulled inwards and sarcomere uh, it gets shortens and uh, that is what contraction is okay so i band gets shortened and a bands retain its length and this is how the mechanism of the muscle contraction takes place uh, see this is uh, your uh, th see this diagram and this what happens is your this is your myosin filament and these green are your actin filaments and this is your z lines and the distance between two z line is sarcomere okay uh, so um, uh, the z lines they are attached to the actins is also pulled inward see this has also been pulled inward and uh, so the sarcomere it shortens this the distance between two z 
straight line is being shortened and this is what we call it as muscle contraction okay see this diagram in this the action potential it inhibits the ca uh, 2 plus pump and it uh, binds to the troponin uh, and it causes a conformational change and this exposes the myosin head and after the myosin head is bind to the actin the energy from the atp is released and uh, action potential it inhibits the calcium pump and calcium binds to the troponin and this exposes the myosin binding site on the actin okay and after the myosin head binds to the actin the energy from ATP is necessary to produce uh, and this uh, and this is how it goes on and on see um, it exposes the myosin filament this is the myosin head okay and it has ca2 plus has bind to the troponin okay and it causes a conformational change and thus myosin is now being attached to the actin this is your actin and this is your myosin okay and uh, this is how uh, z and this is your z line uh, and its z line is being uh, pulled inward and this is how uh, the sarcomere or the distance between two z line gets shortened and this is how the muscle contraction takes place See, this is the contraction that is taking place okay now uh, let's see uh, an overview of the mechanism of muscle uh, contraction that uh, this is your relaxed state and this is your contraction state and this is the maximally contracted state this is the relaxed stage these are the z lines 1 2 and 3 okay and um, this is your actin which is attached with the Z line and this is also your actin which is attached to the Z line and these are your myosins and this is your H zone and this is your I zone and this is what is this this is your A zone that is your anisotropic uh, zone and this is your I zone uh, that is isotropic okay and this is how the relaxed state looks like but what happens in a contracting stage is uh, that these um, it uh, they are uh, all you can say the sarcomere uh, is going to be contracted okay uh, the sarcomere means this uh, distance between two z lines so it is going to be contracted or it is going to be shortened so uh, as you can see in the maximally contracted state these two lines or the actins two actins have now been uh, they are overlapping each other and this is how the sarcomere sarcomere means the distance between two uh, two z lines it gets uh, shortens or uh, this is how how the contraction takes place okay so the myosin releases the ADP and PI and it goes back to its original or relaxed state and a new ATP binds and cross bridge is broken ATP is again hydrolyzed by the myosin head and the cycle of cross bridge formation and breakage is repeated causing the further sliding And when uh, Ca2 plus uh, ions are pumped back to the sarcoplasmic uh, uh, cisternae, the actin filaments are they are again masked, and this causes the return of the Z line back to their original position, and which we call it as relaxation. This is the animation how uh, it takes place. See, this is the these are the two Z lines, Z and Z, and uh, these red one are your actins, and this is your myosin. This uh, blue one are your myosin. And and uh, this is uh, your I band uh, that is isotropic and this what is this this is your uh, an isotropic band okay see this is how it takes place actin are now being overlapped uh, and these two Z lines they are uh, being pulled in uh, inward and isotropic bands they are being shortened and this is how the mechanism of the muscle contraction takes place okay so 
मैकेनिज्म ऑफ मसल कंट्रैक्शन द रिएक्शन टाइम ऑफ द फाइबर्स दे वेरी इन डिफरेंट मसल्स रिपीटेड एक्टिवेशन ऑफ द मसल लीड्स टू द एक्यूमुलेशन ऑफ लैक्टिक एसिड एंड दिस कॉजेज मसल फटीक एंड इट इज ड्यू टू एनारोबिक ब्रेकडाउन ऑफ ग्लाइकोशन इन द मसल्स ओके सी दिस इज अगेन द एनिमेशन ऑफ क्रॉस ब्रिज साइकिल और द कॉम्पोनेट्स वट हैपन्स ह्योर इज this is the actin and these are the cross binding site this is the tropomyosin and this is uh, troponin and uh, this is these are the ca binding sites and this is the myosin head where it goes and attaches see it is being attached and ca2 plus is now being uh, uh, it um, it binds to the troponin and tropomyosin translocates to the and this is how the first myosin head begins to and this has now begun okay and this is how the muscle contraction takes place or the actin and myosin they work uh, in conjugation with each other okay but uh, this see the uh, again see this this is a troponin and this is a ca2 plus binding site these are the myosin head and uh, ca2 uh, uh, atp has now bounded to the myosin head and uh, then it is going and attached to with the um, actin um, molecule and uh, the second myosin head it begins to actin uh, okay and uh, and this uh, cross bridge cycle terminates when this ca2 plus this yellow one is the ca2 plus when it goes uh, uh, out uh, so this is how it uh, works okay uh, relaxation and contraction takes place now we'll see uh, how uh, chemistry takes place in the mechanism of the muscle action in its simplest form biochemical experiments on muscle contractile proteins have shown that during the cross bridge cycle a combines with m and atp to produce force adp and inorganic phosphate it this can be represented as chemical reaction in the form a plus n uh, m plus atp it gives uh, a plus m this a is actin m is myosin and when it uh, an atp approaches them then it forms a plus m that is actin plus myosin plus adp plus pi plus force okay that means this atp has now uh, broken down into adp and inorganic phosphate plus lot of force okay and how have we also know that upon the death of the muscle a rigor state is entered whereby actin and myosin interact to form a very stiff connection okay so um, actin plus myosin they form a am rigor complex which is a stiff combination and if actin and myosin can interact by themselves where does atp come into picture during contraction um so am plus atp it uh, give rise to myosin plus atp plus pi okay and uh, scientists now agree that atp serves at least two function which are those function uh, first atp disconnects it actin from myosin and second atp is hydrolyzed by myosin molecule to produce energy required for muscle contraction now actin and myosin bridge they very rapidly dissociates due to atp binding to myosin and uh, free myosin bridges moves into position to attach to actin during which atp is hydrolyzed so myosin uh, plus atp it gives m plus adp plus pi okay and the free myosin bridge along with its hydrolysis product rebinds to the active filament and uh, this is how it takes place so now uh, what is the differentiation between red muscle fiber and white muscle fiber uh, red uh, muscle fiber they are red colored due to the presence of myoglobin whereas uh, white muscle they are uh, colored due to the lesser amount of myoglobin and second is uh, plenty of uh, mitochondria are present in the red muscle fiber whereas a uh, small amount of mitochondria are present in the white muscle fibers aerobic uh, metabolism takes place in the red muscle fiber whereas and aerobic that means in absence of oxygen it takes place in the right muscle fibers and uh, 
uh, this uh, red muscle fiber it shows slow and sustained contraction and this white muscle fiber they show fast contraction for shorter period so this was all about the structure of the contractile proteins uh, present in the um, humans that is actin and myosin and the mechanism of muscle contraction so thank you and keep watching edipedia word videos and in my next section of the presentation will be studying about the skeletal system present in the human body that is axial skeleton and appendicular skeleton so till then stay tuned